It's being recorded. The other thing that I would like to ask everybody is to put yourself on mute. And then uh, let me start by welcoming you once again. Welcome in this uh, workshop uh, organized by ReCheck as part of the Dutch Blockchain Week. A workshop means that we are going to present something to you, but it's not only going to be a one directional uh, presentation. The setup that we have uh, in mind is uh, the first 15 minutes, I will present what ReCheck is working on, what is uh, the product, the solutions that we have in mind. Then uh, Emil will uh, come. I will explain who we are later. Emil will uh, do the demonstration of the product. And in the third part, of uh, the session, we would like to have a conversation with you. Uh, there are several questions. I will mention them in a minute, but let me start by introducing myself. My name is Joe Broncos. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm the chief commercial officer of ReCheck. I joined the team about uh, a year ago because we were doing some products uh, together and the products actually that we do together are meant for the real estate sector. My background is real estate and the background of the blockchain of the ReCheck team is blockchain. And uh, by all the solutions that they were already creating, we thought this is a, a perfect uh, solution that fits to needs in the real estate sector. I will explain a little, a little bit more about it later. The second part done by Emil is uh, Emil Stoyanov. He's the chief technical officer of the company. And like I said, in the third part, we will have conversation. And I think also our CEO, Emilian Inef, he will also join the conversation at that moment. Um, like I said, a workshop. Uh, we would also like to have your impression. So we have some questions and uh, our support, Radina, she will post those questions also during the presentation in the chat window. So please use the chat window if you have anything during the presentations. Then we can go come back to you on it in the conversations at the end. Uh, some of the questions we have for you is uh, if you see our solutions, would you like to use these solutions as a tool for your data or file exchange in your own business or for personal needs? Uh, what are the functionalities that are most efficient uh, to you? that you seem most efficient? Are there some functionalities perhaps missing? Uh, how important is the certification of data of files? What is your uh, opinion on that? And uh, what do you think? What should be the user experience? How do you think about that? So those are questions we would also receive your input and have a conversation on afterwards. But let me first start by presenting the product. And as I already explained, my background is real estate and we are developing this amongst other for the real estate sector. But actually what we want to do is create a, a place where you can store uh, an online service to, to secure, to share, to sign and to trace data on the blockchain. So it is very generic. And I understand that most people here in the meeting today will have not a real estate background. So we would like to have the generic conversation with you. Let's go to the first, the company ReCheck. We have been established in 2016, six years ago. And from the beginning, we were looking to, de to develop decentralized solutions. We believe that uh, Web3 and the, 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 the decentralized uh, situation, that this somehow is going to be an important part of the future digital infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> by... Um, we want to uh, uh, build blockchain solutions. So blockchain is part of the core of our company, but blockchain in a way that data protection and privacy and traceability are ensured. Uh, it should be trust that we bring rather than uh, a lot of uh, digital solutions where people cannot trust what they are building. In the past years, we've done several uh, projects amongst other in combination with the Dutch government this European government. And uh, also uh, we were part of the Techstars 
uh, incubator program a year ago. We also managed to uh, decided to partner with Blockchain NL and with the European Digital SME Alliance. So in this uh, ecosystem, we think uh, we can be part of uh, the shaping of a new digital economy. What can you do with ReCheck? If you look in the center of this picture, our online service and toolbox is meant to protect any personal and sensitive data and share it privately and trace. I have, yeah, trace it on the blockchain. So how do we do this? First left uh, uh, side on the top, we want to create a secure vault, a place where you can store your information. It should be full traceability. So all the information, how it is treated, how it is changed, how it is amended, that should be uh, verifiable. And uh, we, we want to, to hash it in blockchain to create digital evidence of it. Also the, the, the security of data, that it is only your data and nobody else can uh, access the data will be protected because we encrypt the information so that all the sensitive data stays sensitive. And you, in the, the bottom right, you as the owner of the information, you will be allowed to share the information only with those people uh, who need to know it. And because this information is encrypted, it is end to end, only the ones who need to have access to information, they will have access. Nobody else will have uh, access to this information, will know what is your information. So this is uh, uh, how we managed to, to really create something that has trust in the, in the core of the product. If you look to ReCheck's DNA, you find actually those principles back. And we, we believe the decentralized world is what we like to discover and where we want to develop uh, uh, valuable products for. In this decentralized world, it is not only technology, we think also identity, uh, the decentralized identity, but also a decentralized way of storage is key to de develop this and to enable this. And that's what we have in our DNA. Also open source. If people in these land structure, decentralized structures, if we ask them to trust our solution, they should somehow be able to see how we developed it. And therefore all our uh, 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 GitHub pages and uh, other stuffs, they are available for the ecosystem. Privacy is uh, by design. We, we can't read your data, like I explained. We encrypt it in a way that only the ones who need to have access to data, they only will have uh, information. And by combining those three points, actually all that is somehow complex on decentralization and Web3, all these complex things, we make them easy. And this is what you see in the bottom right. We want to create easy user experiences and not make blockchain complex, but uh, give the users a simple solution where blockchain is under the hood. The pains that we did, uh, want to, uh, to solve, the pains that we experienced in the people uh, we spoke with when validating, we found out that sovereign individual is not always sovereign online. A lot of your information is stored at the, the, the large data monopolists and they somehow control information that is your information. So we think this could be uh, made more, more decentralized. Uh, often having some, in, some data that can be trusted, we can become a byproduct of the algorithms of those large products, but the input can then be secured and you can control it. Also the type of security risks that are attached to centralized solutions. We think by having security at the bottom, at the beginning, at the, this somehow avoids uh, many cybersecurity risks during uh, uh, the, the moment that it is in platforms. Also, we, we have found out that online products, they say that they are user-centric, but mostly they're uh, product-centric. Uh, they, they see the data and the value of the information coming from the users as something very 
uh, valuable. They see it as the asset that they want to, to create value with. But then sometimes they forget that actually what they do should be done for the user. So why not turn it around? And why let those large plot products, those large platforms, why do we let them own and control what in fact is yours? So we think that uh, those pains can be addressed in a better product. And that is what we want to create. Actually, the way how we uh, develop our products, it is a modular way. We think there's not one product that fits all use cases, but we have learned from the, uh, the pains from our network. And we said we want to create something that is modular and actually there are different components that depending on the use case you want to apply them to can be combined. First of all, there's the cybersecurity layer. We have tools uh, uh, that can be added as a plug and play model to existing products where we can uh, give uh, security. You can control your data. Another tool, another module is that you can encrypt your data and that you can share it in a secure way with everybody else. It can be personal data, but can also be business information. Then we have a tool where you can track and trace and create an audit trail for all what is happening with your data. Uh, who, who changed something, who downloaded it. All that information can be stored with blockchain, with a hash, so that always it is uh, reproducible. And in the end, uh, we want to have those self-custodial self wallets. If information is important for you, you should own uh, your own information and it should not be owned by a third party from whom sometimes you have to buy it back on the moment you need it. And if you have your own wallet, actually the access, it can be controlled. And that is our last module be, uh, via the crypto asset. Actually, if you can uh, uh, grant access via a token, then uh, you can control in which, uh, for which purpose, who may have access to what uh, parts of your information. Why recheck? Because <clears throat> there are three things that we do different than many others, and this is what we are outstanding in. First of all, the zero knowledge policy. Every bit of information is treated with the complete confidentiality. So we trust that all your information is secure, the way how we designed our products. By doing this, the transparency that we can give, will you will be in control and therefore it will never be conflicting with your own privacy. You know with whom, for what purpose you want to share which information. And we have the guaranteed data immunability because we have those uh, verifiable evidence. All the information that you show to third parties, you can always prove that this is the, the truth because you have this uh, audit trail available. Let's go to the use cases. And actually we, we uh, separate them in uh, three, uh, three uh, categories. The first category, are use cases meant for enterprises. Then I will come in a second slide, use cases for uh, personal, for private persons. And the third for developers. But let's go to enterprises. Uh, customer onboarding. If you know who is your customer, if you can show evidence, what is his background? Uh, uh, what is his identity? Uh, this is uh, one of the, the, the modules that we have to onboard. Like I said, we have digital logbooks. If it's about, we know about buildings, a lot of information is available at very fragmented uh, silos, but if information is crucial, how can we combine it? And not only for buildings, you can also imagine that doing this for other assets. Uh, what do we know, for example, about a piece of art? What do we know about uh, uh, cars? Uh, there's a lot you can think of here. Uh, you can think about data rooms on the moment that you want to sell something. What is the information you want to share with potential buyers of your product? Create a data room and control the access to the information. But also data exchange on the left and the bottom. Uh, with whom do you want to share what information? Are you going to share sensitive information via emails, via Excel files, uh, old-fashioned way? 
or are you going to send it uh, somehow encrypted from end to end that only with the right access code you can access that information and that you can be sure that nobody else will have access to that information. And last but not least, our module for the token gating. If you can show that you have a token, then somehow you can have secure automated access to uh, certain information. And this can be used, for example, for your loyalties, loyalty programs. If you can show that you're a frequent customer, perhaps you can have more benefits than others, other ones. And this is something uh, that actually with the different building blocks that we have developed can be created. We go to the category for end users, that more the personal and the private uh, things. It is somehow similar. You can create your own personal data vault. Imagine how much documentation you have about yourselves, but how much of this is controlled by yourself? Why not put sensitive information or copies of it in a vault that you can better control this information and have it in a trustworthy way available in the moment you need it? So that you can do private sharing with whom you will like to do that you have advanced uh, electronic signatures that uh, have, for example we know the digital signatures but the european uh, uh, commission we're working on the adian uh, adas uh, project so why not uh, uh, also use uh, what you have make it compatible with that our solution is developed in such a way that it is compatible and that have your digital identity wallet. If you control the wallet, you can also, uh, with your identity, control every information in the wallet. And last, we have to use cases for developers. If you are developing a product where you think these modules or the, the product of this uh, digital uh, 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 vault, if you think this fits, then we would like to get in touch because we think we can become a facilitator due to these centralized protocols, or we can uh, help you with the tools for encryption or traceability of uh, the information that you process, or that we help you validating the data on the blockchain so that this audit trail uh, can be done. And everything that we do, that we talk, we have those modules. So it's, uh, small service uh, solutions, the service uh, design, and you can, we can uh, see how this fits together. So this is in a nutshell, the product uh, that we at uh, ReCheck develop. I would like to give the floor to Emil now to demonstrate how it is working, because I can imagine that uh, only presenting it in slides is uh, somehow vague to understand. I think you better get the message on the moment that you see how it works. And therefore I'm going to stop sharing my screen And I would like to invite Emil to take it over from here. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, extensive presentation and uh, information about what we do. So we're going into the um, live presentation with all the risks that exist in the live presentation. But anyway, uh, we have done a lot of, of um, work to avoid eventually uh, hiccups. But I will share my screen now. And... Uh, you tell me if you can see it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put myself on mute. Okay. I hope you see because, uh, yes. Okay. So, um, our, if you go to my recheck.io, this is the live service. So we're, we're going to show the live service as it is. Um, you're greeted by um, a challenge code. We call this a challenge code, which is used to log in into the system. For for the, for this purpose, you need uh, the application called a Recheck Wallet, which you can download from uh, Apple App Store or Google Play. And once you start it, uh, you will get automatically new identity, and you're ready to go. So, uh, what only you need to do in order to log into the system is scan this QR code. I'm doing this right now. And then you confirm the request for login. And basically the system automatically recognizes our, uh, our signature and logs us in. So we're presented with this, um, I must say, familiar 
uh, user interface. We try to do it as simple as possible, as familiar as possible to uh, file management service. On the left side, you see uh, the options where you can select files that you have uploaded, files that have been shared with you, um, uh, sorry, that you have shared files that have been shared with you and your archive. So uh, these are the categories of, of um, data you can have on a higher level. And on the right side, you see the list of files. In this case, I have a directory which contains two files inside and I can go back. On the top, we have the options that are available for each file. And on the very top, we have the filters. So you can search by keyword or uh, a date in which the file was uploaded, or in case you have opted for putting a category on a file, you can search by category. So how do we protect the file and how do we share a file? Let's try to take, I have prepared here one file that is a sample PDF. If we open it, it looks like this. But in order to, uh, to use it with recheck, you just need to take the file, drag it into the uh, browser, and it's, it's uh, encrypted in the browser and sent to the servers. Uh, so it's really uh, very important to know the server does not store any data in clear form. It's always encrypted with the keys used by the user. So what I've done now is basically I encrypted this file to myself and pushed it to the service. So I can put here a category, for example, uh, I don't work, and we can, we can use a keyword test. So right now I have the file stored. I have the, the categories marked and we can search for it and we can execute all the actions. So on the right side, we see the so-called data action section, which allows us to do different things. Uh, we can open the file, we can edit the metadata. We can decide to sign, to place a digital signature, which is visible to the other uh, people we've shared data with, or we can share the data. Uh, the last feature is very important because it aggregates all the different actions that have been performed on the data and creates a so-called certificate. I will just use this and show you, which can be printed out and stored as a digital, as a reference to the digital records on the blockchain. So what we have see, uh, seen here is we have uploaded the file with a concrete timestamp by our identity. We, uh, this is the identity on my phone actually through which portal, and we have here a so-called combined um, hashes or the trail, which can be used to validate that this file has been uploaded uh, and um, marked in, uh, with a timestamp. What you see then below is the network on which we have um, registered the file. And in this case, it's the near protocol network. Very important, what was the, smart contract that uh, stored the, con the, uh, the trails. In this case, it's human readable format because of the cool near technology we use. It's, uh, in this case, it's virtual one platform we check near. And then at the end, we have a um, link to the transaction explorer for the near protocol, which if you click it, you will get specific information about the transaction that has been performed. And I just want to move um, the zoom control. Okay, so basically, I have, okay, here's the transaction that has been performed. And it's, it's reflected on the blockchain uh, of the near protocol. Um, we go back. So, so this certificate can be downloaded and stored on your drive and can be just used to uh, have a reference to what happened on the data. Every new action on this file will result into a new page into the certificate. We'll check this out later. Okay. 
So um, what we do next is let's let's try to to sign this, okay? But first, if I go into my profile page here, I will see that I have uh, set up um, my signature, right? So if I sign this uh, this file, I don't go here, sign. I confirm, and what happens is that I get automatically on my phone um, a sign request notification, which I, if I approve and confirm, actually sends the necessary confirmation and signature to the system, it reacts, and we can see that the file is now signed. If we open again the certificate, you will see there is a second page, which tells now that the file is signed. So all the same structure, but it's signed. So we get a new page for every action of the data. The next thing we can do is we open the file. And I can show you I'm confirming now on my phone, exactly. So it's automatically decrypted in my browser and visualized. So if this is a PDF, a movie, a picture, it's visualized here, you can, you can check it out. If you go to the details section here, we see the complete information, including the signatures. So we, if we share this file with anybody and request a signature, they can place the signature to be in the log of events. And here we can see in the transactions history for this file that we have uploaded it from my identity, which automatically is detected on this timestamp. Then I have downloaded it, this action and actually decrypted it. So basically the actions on uh, download and decrypt are separated and could be verified independently. Now, storing a file isn't, well, it's useful if you want to store your, for example, your uh, precious documents, like uh, you know, documents of a house or uh, personal documents or identification documents. But, you know, sometimes we need to share. And this is where I think rich check is the most powerful is uh, the way we, we uh, handle sharing. Uh, each file could be shared in two ways. If we select the file and they'll share, Okay, we have two ways of sharing. One is the uh, sharing with specific user of the of the system. So, if we have, if we know here the um, uh, specific address or the contact name, which we can store actually in the contacts section here to the left. I don't have yet uh, contact because it's a new <laughs> new account which I wanted to demo. Uh, but if we go to um, to share again. Uh, we can share with a specific user or we can share by link for a specific email. So this is, this is very different from what you, what you have really seen in other um, file sharing services or if, it, if, you, if you want Google Drive with the others. So whenever you want to create a link for sharing, we bind it to a specific email address. So in this case, I will uh, enter my private email. And what will happen is now that I will authorize this file to be opened by the user who has this email and he has to prove it before he opens the file. So I click here on generate link. This of course uh, asks for my permission, uh, which I will not confirm. And on the phone, actually, it is all used, uh, all uh, could be done with the face ID or touch ID, doesn't matter in order to, to make the things faster. So here is the generated link, okay? And now this link is, could be opened only by the one who, who has the ownership of the email that it was bound for. So if I paste now here, but I will actually try to do it within, uh, I'm sorry, I will want to do it within incognito window so we don't have mixing sessions. 
So I open this link. For example, I got it via email or any other way. Okay. So this goes to our uh, viewer. So save the link. I agree that this data could be tracked. Okay. And the system automatically sends a challenge code to my email because this link has been actually designed to be opened by me, the one who has the email. And if I go now to, to my uh, Gmail account, Okay. There are too many steps in the Google authentication. I will now authenticate the Google as well. But this is, you know, this is the way security should work. It should be done properly and should work. Um, so, I still haven't received the email or not yet. Let's try to share with another oh, activity. <coughs> Did when the spam? Let's see. Nope. Let's see here. Okay, here is it actually, I don't know why. So we have received the confirmation code here. We can take it and go and confirm that we have received this code in order to open the file. So if I don't enter the, the codes, it will just not be able to be decrypted. The code is a partial, key which works together with a key pair that is generated for this case. And here I'm able to view the file, download it, and so on. So now if we go back to our first screen, and if we decide to see what happened with the data, we go to the certificate. And what happened is we have a new action that is called emailed with all the details from my identity to this email. And then it was decrypted by the person owning this email here. And at the last page, we provide a specific dictionary of all the terms used in the, in the structure above. In case somebody is not familiar, this could be very useful in the, in the course, for example. So we have uh, demonstrated how this data is shared over privately and over email with additional binding to the email owner. Um, another feature that uh, is very uh, needed in this case is, well, I got all these numbers here, but I don't understand them. How can I verify that the specific action actually happened directly on the blockchain without, without using your platform? Well, if you scan this code or you just click on the link, link here, you will be taken to an application that is a, a real DAP. It's a decentralized application. It communicates direct with the blockchain. In this case, on the right side, these are the supported uh, blockchain networks. In this case, it's near. And we are checking the specific action that this identifier uploaded the file and as this identifier uploaded the file with this identifier. And if you want to verify it, we just click here. And there is a request directly to the near protocol that verifies these trails. In this case, we have all the necessary blockchain data to, to validate and to confirm that this action has happened on the data. And this is valid for all the different actions on the data. Currently, we support upload. We support signing, we support sharing, we should download, decrypt. These are the, the actions that uh, can be used with any type of data, even the smallest, smallest chunk of data. Um, 
I think this is uh, more or less shows uh, the functionality. As I told here, we can search by, if we tell, for example, test, it will just filter all the test files that we have we have created uh, for this uh, for this account. Or if we tell we want also work, just you want to work, it goes on to work, and so on. And um, I believe this is um, this is all. Um, both simple. At the same time, I must tell you this is has been a very hard work behind. And what you see here as a user interface is available as an API for a library that we have provided and can be embedded in any project. So basically, if you want to enable your application or service with features such as secure storage of data, uh, secure sharing of data, tracing of data, transparency in the, in the sharing, uh, this could be done very easily with few lines of code indeed. Um, through the library. Um, thank you for the attention, and uh, I hope we have provoked your thoughts, and um, we'll be glad to answer some questions. Brian, can I ask something? Sure. I, I understand that the, behind the scenes, you have a decentralized storage and uh, decentralized nodes in order to, to store the files. And the question whether these nodes are controlled by you or there are different people that upload nodes in order to store it and what is the incentive to do it? Well, in the, there, there are several aspects. The first thing is where is the data stored, right? Uh, on, on the back end of our solution, we have abstraction on the storage. So you can decide to store it on, on S3, you can decide to store it on your own premises, you can store it locally on a file. Uh, so basically, uh, it doesn't matter where the file is stored, the file is always encrypted, right? Some of the users tell, hey, I want to, uh, you know, of, of, of our solutions, they tell, yeah, but I want to store the files on our side. Yes, okay, you, you, you provide a storage protocol and it would, the file will be pushed there, be it FTP. PSP, if you have um, if you have a cloud account, uh, the PS3, and so on. So basically, the storage itself, for the product, it doesn't matter so much because we we actually provide the storage as part of the service just because many people don't have the knowledge how to provide a storage service. So uh, in this case, the data is encrypted. We don't have any access to it, even if we wanted to. We, don't, we just don't have it. And uh, yes, yeah, so the other um, so the other way of storing this is pushing to the IPFS, right? Where this data could be even more decentralized because it could be accessed from any point of the, of the network. Um, for now, IPFS, in our opinion, uh, is not necessary, but it could be used without any issue. Just we don't use it ourselves as a, as a matter of efficient storage. If you're familiar with IPFS, you know it has its own issues, which sometimes are rather creating hurdles instead of a solution. So basically, if a client of us decides to use IPFS, they could use it and hook it up to the uh, to the backend. The other question, the other part of your question, I believe, is more like: Are you able to use the service independently and not the one that we host? Right, this is this is possible for our customers that require so. In this case, they have to support the installation and integration, or we can help with installation integration of our server on their side. And then again comes the question: Where do they store the data? They want to store it in house, or they want to store it in the cloud, or they want to store it in our service. So it could be a mixed uh, kind of uh, setup. If I understand correctly, the transaction and all the actions are actually on blockchain, probably over the Ethereum, and the storage is currently centralized unless I want to integrate with IPFS, for example, as you mentioned. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yes. Well, our vision is that Web3 will not happen overnight, right? We, we, we could, I think, quickly categorize our solution more like Web 2.5 rather than Web 3, because it has all the necessary, you know, server components which are not highly decentralized. But 
the feature of how we use the blockchain is already pretty decentralizing the whole idea of the data tracing. Um, and whoever wants to use our solution, they can decide to use it in-house instead of our own solution. And again, use the blockchain or decentralized uh, uh, storage even if they want. So, you know, bringing the identity, uh, you know, the private key on the user side is something that we are pushing as much as we can because we believe the data ownership is you have the keys, you have the data. If you don't have the key, the data is not yours. This I understand. Thank you. Are there any more questions uh, to me or to Emil about what you saw in the presentations? Yeah, hi, Nick? this is uh, okay. Nick. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry for asking stupid questions. I'm still trying to get, I'm a lawyer, so forgive me. Um, um, why, why would you, is my understanding correct that this is essentially kind of a file sharing system like we transfer or, or Dropbox, but then perhaps more secure? And is that, is that right? And, and, and why would you necessarily need to use the blockchain for this? That isn't quite clear to me. That's a, that's a great question and thank you for asking. Um, as you noted, there are many services out there that allow you to share a file, okay? And what you got from presentation, eventually this is more secure, right? And why do we use the blockchain? So the blockchain in this case is your notary, independent notary, that you have provided or you have handed over a file to somebody. And you have a clear chain of you know, custody of this file. So if you're a contractor, for example, of a, uh, for a company uh, and you're creating a software project or design project, or uh, you're, you're given the work that you know, is sensible, sensitive, you'd rather have the system that allows you to prove that the data has been transferred securely it has been transferred, it has been headed over, right? So this certificate that we generate makes the whole difference from all the others, uh, other um, services out there because you have digital proof for your actions on the data, especially if you're in the context of, of financial data, for example, where uh, you need to, to take care of the numbers not being seen by anyone and you still want to prove that somebody received this data and he's the context he's in the context of uh, you know your contractual obligations for non-disclosure then this service is where it plays a lot of it gives a lot of value mm, okay thanks that's interesting and and, uh, and do you we can, blockchain? We are still speculating here, uh, excuse me, uh, still speculating here because there is a lack of precedent. But with this certificate, you are in advantage in the court when it comes to a dispute about the data leak. I would also like to refer to your question in the chat window. There was a question in the financial institutions where they need to do KYC checks. I think this is perhaps one of the big use cases where a system like this can be valuable because my background is also banking. And I remember some years ago, there was a big challenge to banks to, to actually update the information they thought about clients, and not only the information they know about the clients, but also information what is shared, what conversations has been done, have been done with clients. And this, uh, actually, the, the conversations, they go in a very confidential way. So you want to keep it secure. But on the other hand, you need to be transparent because your client always needs to have access to every information you have about them and what, what was crucial in, for example, negotiations, what information has been shared. So there's always uh, a very, uh, uh, you say, sensitive information sharing issue in these uh, information exchanges. And we think having this from end to end encrypted and shared and in such a way that you can verify all the steps that have been uh, passed with this information processing, uh, this audit trail, I think this is somehow crucial to, to create the evidence that is needed to create the security, but also the transparency that is needed. Does it mean that recipients of the information 
have to be on chain? Do they need a wallet to receive the information? No, they don't have uh, to need the wallet. That's why when you share with somebody, you bind the information to their email. So basically when they open this link, they confirm their themselves by logging in into their email and basically providing uh, clues for their identity, right? Okay. So in case you're sharing with somebody via link, you have to share with somebody that has identity as an email. Mm -hmm. that, 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 do you see it the same, Mr. Tolenaar? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have a technical background, so it's difficult for me to understand it exactly. Um, I mean, what I'm, what I'm looking for is, uh, I envisage a, a, a world where um, I'm interested in on-chain forms of money, and I think that in the future, you know, things like stable coins will only be transferable between whitelisted addresses. And I'm kind of interested in solutions that allow addresses to be KYC'd and and identified so that you, you kind of have a circuit of, of whitelisted addresses between which, you know, on-chain forms of money can be transferred. And I, I, was, I was just interested whether, whether a solution like this could could be used for that, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, yeah, that, that, that was like my main question. Whitelisting, I think again, I think if you uh, break the, 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 the banking process or the financial institution process into small processes, one of the small processes is KYC. So if somebody's whitelisted as, as the KYC service provider, for example, how can you as another financial institution rely on the information provided by this third party? And I think then trust uh, what did they do? How did they treat the information? How did they somehow create this secure information, but also be able to share it? I think I, I see it as, as one of the, 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 the ways how we can enable this. And it is new, it has not been applied at this moment, but I think in a decentralized world, more and more uh, solutions like these will become valuable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how you guys interact with your clients? Like, do you interact only through your API or uh, uh, because you have like already your experience and uh, uh, you engage in project? Well, like, for example, we are like a team of distributed developers and we like uh, develop bridges and uh, applications for different protocols and different blockchains, but we like uh, don't have, uh, like we have weak security part and I see like a lot of points that we are, you already developed. In your product, like we need in our, like, because we make like infrastructure for for new blockchains, and this is like point that we need. Or mostly, you have a product, and you're like product centric, and through through this API, we can like uh, implement it in, in our uh, and only like this. Or you can share your like, or you can engage in in, in other kind of projects, uh, except uh, recheck. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to say at the end, but like uh, this is a great question that you have. Actually, we want to offer this product also to be embedded in other uh, solutions. So uh, see it as that small service, like I said in the previous one. Yeah, yeah. Um, this... If you have more the service orientated approach, then you can say this is one of the services I need to create my product, and mm -hmm. then we are very happy to to figure out how it fits into your product. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to say at the end. Uh, we not only want to share the, the recording of this uh, meeting today, we shared with all the participants, but we would also like to, to give you an offer. Uh, we want to, to uh, let you link to the ReCheck solution and give some free credits so that you can try it out into your solution. So if you are developing something like that, and if you think this could be really valuable for me, let's get in touch and let's uh, uh, try it out. Yeah, thank you. And this is not only for you, but it's for everybody here yeah. and for everybody that you want to share the recording with. We, we want to scale it into the market now. And uh, we think this is a very generic solution that is fitting to, to many different industries. And the way how it is set up, the modular way, is that it is easy to customize to any situation that is somehow coping with these challenges. Yeah. Let me see, uh, are there any more questions? Because we posed some questions in the beginning, and otherwise I'm gonna ask the, the, the room back. What I see in front of me is a, a screen where most of you have uh, shut down the camera. 
that's okay for me, but still I want to ask you uh, to, to raise your hand on the following questions. In the beginning, uh, one of the questions was, uh, what is your first impression? Uh, would you use your solution in your personal or professional, as a, per, in your, as a personal or professional tool for data or file exchange? May I see your hands? If you think, yes, this is for me a valuable solution. If you don't think this, please leave your hand below. So show me your hand on the moment you think this is valuable for you. But this can be valuable for you. Oh my God. Uh, they raise yeah, the hands. Uh, bottom, bottom, you can. Uh, no. A reactions button. Is it enabled? I think it's not. Or I can do uh, it like this. Show my thumbs up, and there, yeah, Rick. I see I some more. Okay. okay. But wait long enough, then I have uh, a majority of hands. Mm. <laughs> I I feel like sharing a little bit, but if it's okay now, or maybe I can wait for Joe to be to be finished. No, oh, but uh, go ahead. It is most... yeah, I, I just don't like to be silent here, and I I just want to share that I'm um, very new to software development and to Web three and crypto. So I'm mostly joining because I'm curious about the the, the company Recheck. But we, the company that I now work for, we have a case management system where um, I can imagine it could be useful. There is a use probably for sharing files safely and knowing what's happened to, the, to them. I'm sure that the company I work for um, could be some kind of, could be, it could be useful for them, for us. Uh, but I, I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm just too inexperienced to know for sure. Um, if this would fit, and if it would be, uh, uh, if it would fit into the the, the the software that we have, and if it's easy to to link to link it all together, uh, but I do definitely think there's um, there not there there's certainly uh, sensitive data needs to be shared, and it's valuable to know who who's received the data that they've received in a, in a safe way. Yeah. Um, one one challenge I see that we that we have is uh, whenever data is, is accessed, I mean, there's, there's always, after downloading or seeing it on your screen, you can always record it somehow. If, if you've downloaded it, it's, you, 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 lose, you lose, you might lose the, what's happening, what's happening to it. And also, um, but, but that's like unavoidable because you can always make videos or, or, or pictures with your phone. So I, I would be curious how, that, how something like that would be solved. Perhaps, Emil, it's another question for you, but let me answer the first part of the question. Uh, like I said, we will send the recording, the link to the recording to everybody. So if you cannot judge it on your own, please feel free to, to, to forward it to, to or share it with the people in, in your company. And there's also our hand reach. We would like to get in touch with companies who like to explore if this fits to what they are developing and to, to figure out what the value can be for your company. So uh, the reason why we present today is to show and present what we have, also to demonstrate that we have a working product already there. And it would be great for us if we can have a conversation with your company. So uh, no, no uh, how do you say, no obligations from our side, but also interesting to understand the use cases where you, you perhaps see uh, possible uses for it. I will, I, I will, I will keep it in mind, and I, I, I'll bring it up in the team if uh, if I see uh, a see possibility. Yeah, and then the second part, perhaps I can hand over to Emil. Yeah, if I understand correctly, the question is um, well, I understand it two ways actually. Well, if you're using the solution and you want to share the file with somebody, you don't have to download it in order to share it. You, you know, the API for sharing is really um, like two lines of code where um, you just specify an identifier. If you want to use it as it is with the portal, um, we've just, you know, created this viewer as a way of, of visualizing the data that is, that is uh, stored. And the second part of the question was, what happens if I download the file and I share it without the system, right? Is this, well, this is, this is already kind of, um, I, I must say maybe impossible to track because you have all the, the various way of, you know, sending information. 
What is more important in, in, in this case, as I see it is that if you've done your job to securely send the data to a specific person and then this data has leaked somewhere else, you have at least the root of the possible, you know, leakage uh, peers, so to say. It's not maybe sufficient in many cases, but maybe in many cases it is, depending on how many people you're sharing with. And then, of course, sometimes we are required to share in a, uh, in a secure way. So uh, such a service would, would be sufficient and compliant there. This is, this is how I see it. But of course, if you have the, the file in your hands, nothing stops you of, of sharing this, right? This is... Thanks for your attention. Okay, looking to the clock. I think uh, let's ask the room if you have other urgent questions to us for now, because we have a few more minutes left. Did we ask the question about um, favorite use case or where do you think this solution, be it as an API or service or be it as it is as a user portal, where do you think it's most suitable or where do you see its usage mostly fitting? Any thoughts on that? Nobody? Okay. Well, coming back to my first question, who thinks uh, it can be valuable? I think we reach this majority if I count all the thumbs and the hands up that I've seen. So <laughs> I think this is a very positive uh, conclusion of uh, the workshop. Um, I would like to thank all of you to, for, for being here. And I hope we could somehow inspire you with uh, the work we are doing. Uh, we, it is ongoing work in progress. And uh, I hope that uh, we're showing how we are developing us that we also motivate, inspire others to, to, to come back to us. Like that, we have to get up, we can uh, show uh, what we are doing, we would like to get in touch with companies because in our nature of Web3 decentralized solutions, I think it's connecting the dots and that's what we would like to do. Uh, like I said, you receive all the information. We would also uh, uh, give you some credits to, to try it out by yourselves. Please make use of it and uh, let's, let's connect uh, somewhere in the near future again. And thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And have a nice day.